So imagine here we've got the node part of an isotropic mesh kite and say maybe at this point the, the wind's blowing this way towards it from us. Here are the lines around which hold the mesh node in place on its, on its mesh. Coming up through that centre on an axle here, a couple of bearings, we've got this T-junction. On that T-junction there's two lines going up to the lift kite. There'd be a further line here, your main lifter line coming up uh, for the main bridling to split. All the bridling would come off of here. These two lines are solely for the T to affect the steering on the kite. So as this node is on the left hand side of the, the node mesh, so there's lots more out this way, lots more kites off that way, it's, we want it to slope that way and it's going to tend to be sloped that way with um, the tension in the net as it's set out. So the kite is facing into the wind, the wind of course is still going that way. We're on the left hand side and there's a slope this way. So now as the kite is still going to be straight up, wanting to be straight up, there's going to be more tension on this line, the lower down one, than the one here. It's only going to be slightly more as, you know, this will tend to spin otherwise. It'll tend to want to even out, but the kite will always want to point into wind. So here you've got a little bit of tension on the left hand side, keeping the kite slightly over to the left like this, and thus swelling the, the whole of the, the isotropic mesh. At the front, it's going to be sloped that way. This isn't going to have a left or a right input. At the back, see it might be sloped like that. Again, no left or right input. The opposite will happen on this side. This is now a slightly tighter line, the, the right hand side one, than the, the left hand side one. So the kite would steer more that way. Assuming the kite steering is, is normal steering like that.